Join me for part two as we continue our discussion with Sifu Alex Richter, a.k.a. the Kung Fu Genius, on the Bruce Lee Wang Jackman fight. Also, hear Alex's response to the question, was Bruce Lee a real fighter or just an actor who knew how to stage fights? And listen to Alex sharing some of his new Bruce Lee collectibles with us. Enjoy. Yeah, that's a great, great story. Well, this leads into the next question then, man. It's, it's funny how uh, everything you just mentioned shows how Bruce Lee was evolving at that time. I mean, from the boxing match to the, the other match, it was all like, okay, well, that lasted too long. I shouldn't have got a black eye. Right. Everything was pissing him off to right. develop this ultimate style right. where he wanted to finish a fight within 10 seconds of yes. the fight. Yes. And he was already pre-planning that in his right. mind that Wing right. Chun was just not right. the one way to go, right? Yes, yes. It was evolving since that point. Wow, interesting. So an another... Uh, a fan of the channel mentions his name is uh, Anderson Escobar. So shout out to you, Anderson, and thanks for this question. He says, uh, and this leads into what you were just talking about. Do you think that the Bruce that Bruce Lee beat Wong Jackman in their fight back in the day? And have you heard any firsthand or secondhand stories on that fight from people who actually witnessed it? So uh, what, what do you what do you think of that fight? Do you feel that Bruce Lee won that fight? I mean, th those who witnessed it say he did. Right. Uh, what's your thought on that? So I think first, of, when it comes to expert opinions, I think everyone needs to like chill a little bit because <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, I could know every single Bruce Lee fact about his life and everything about him, and still whatever I think about the Wong Jack Man fight could be wrong. Exactly. Because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people go like, "Well, I like this guy. I like the way he talks about Bruce Lee. So I'm going to take his." Word for it, it. His word for what happened in the... Yeah. So I, I like to preface this with whatever I have to say about the Wong Jack Man fight is literally meaningless. Okay. Because I was not there. Okay? All right? So, Good point. So like, but I think most people who, who chime in on this stuff don't have the intellectual honesty to just say, hey, this is just my take. Yeah. And I could totally be wrong. Yeah. And I'm okay with being wrong because I wasn't there. Yeah. All right? But I think that given the general accounts of what had happened... You know, you have, it's a little bit of a spectrum. Mm -hmm. You have people who are like, okay, Bruce Lee definitely beat him. It was, in, it was like absolutely conclusive. The fight was, you know, now, who, finished, who, who right? do you uh, Who do you know that was actually there? Because we know Linda Lee was there, right? I heard Leo Fong. Did he see the fight as well? Well, there was a well, few I mean, he people says, there. He says he did, but I don't know if he was actually there. I don't know there. if he was there the either. I don't know. Uh, I, I never heard from someone directly who was there. No, I never did either. But I... People who talked to people who were there told me what they said. Okay. But again, that's already now second, second hand, yeah, right? Yeah, second hand. Um, but there's a lot of um, a lot of those witnesses put those things down mm -hmm. in interviews, yeah. right? So even if they didn't tell you personally, the contemporary witnesses to to that fight have have said their piece. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. So yeah. whether they they say it to you or you read it in an interview, mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know yeah, how different it's going to be. So I think that um so you have some people are like okay, it was absolutely decisive victory for Bruce Lee. Then you have okay, Bruce Lee won, but there was like a lot of, a lot of running and a lot of hot nonsense going and then from only one faction, they say oh no, Bruce Lee lost. Okay? And that faction, surprise, surprise, is, is the Wong Jack, Jack Man, Man faction, faction, right? That's what I heard. Um, and, but the reason why I don't believe those guys is uh, twofold. One, uh, if you didn't like Wong Jack Man's story about what happened, mm -hmm. uh, just wait a month, he'll change it. Okay? <laughs> so right. he's constantly changing so the, the, the story. So the late Wong Jack Man changed his assessment of that fight uh, multiple times throughout the years, which is already a red flag. Yeah. It's like, is you, did your memory get better over the years? It usually does the opposite. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's already a red flag. Whereas most of the, on the Bruce Lee side, not just like his peeps, but the people who believe that he won or saw it or whatever, yes. the story's kind of the same. The Wong Jack Man story is all over the place. Wow, if you okay. put it on Good a chart, point. it would be all over the place. Second, um, David Chin, who was a martial artist in the San Francisco area, traditional martial mm -hmm. artist, who was on Wong Jack Man's side, who was there, and he was the actual instigator. He was kind of the guy who kind of put Wong Jack Man up to it, all right? Mm. Thinking that Wong Jack Man probably would beat Bruce Lee. Yeah. Uh, but he was on partial to Wong Jack Man. He said uh, Bruce Lee won. 
Oh wow! So, so for me, I mean, and like, he, he was on the Wong Jackman yeah. team. So for me, I go, why do people keep thinking that there's a controversy? Mm -hmm. The only, the only, because there's a counter narrative to anything. Yeah, doesn't mean it's true. You know, you can know for a fact that your car is silver, and then someone says, well, actually, the car is really red. Well, that's a counter narrative. That doesn't mean it's true. So the fact that someone else says something and says, no, this is the other story. Well, it could be true. We have to explore it. But the fact that someone has a counter story doesn't make it like, oh, here's some insider knowledge you haven't yeah. heard. It can also be bullshit. Yeah, all it's, right? all, it's all opinion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the reason why maybe it was not what people expected is because I think Wong Jack Man didn't really expect Bruce to really want to fight him. I think mm -hmm. he thought they were just going to kind of tag spar or something <laughs> like that. I recently, in preparation for this, because you told me you were going to ask me something about Wong Jack Man, I read Linda Lee's book uh, that came out in like 74. Yeah, yeah. Because she was there. Mm -hmm. And I figured her recollection at that time is probably much better than it is now because yeah, that's just that was 10 years after that yeah because she uh yeah right? and, and she gave an interview later on but who who knows how much she really remembered right. from you know and 25 and years later her recollection was was interesting because it's the same as what everyone else said ah okay um which is basically like Wong Jack man showed up he they were trying to discuss some rules and Bruce Lee's like hey you challenge me there are no rules and that there was kind of a feeling on their side like whoops yeah. You know, they had kind of stepped into it because Bruce is like, they th thought he was going to be scared. He wasn't scared. They thought he was going to agree to these rules and do some kind of play spot. He was like, no. And then suddenly, uh, now Wong Jack Man realized he's in a little bit over his head. Because let's be honest, all right? Wong Jack Man was from a forms based martial mm -hmm, art, mm -hmm. all right? Wing Chun, all right, for whatever criticisms you want to level against it, at least the Wing Chun guys went and fought other Kung Fu people. Exactly. For re and went out and tried, tried it out. It out. Chi Sao, and you're really trying to hit each other. Yeah. We're not just there talking about how this thing is going to theoretically work when someone gives yeah. me this movement, right? We're actually going and testing it out. So I think it's not the same. Kung Fu is not, Kung Fu is, is such a generic term. So to say something like sports, you have badminton and you have mixed martial arts and they're both sports. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, they're both from Kung, Kung Fu, Fu style. Yeah, this, exactly. this is a meaningless so distinction, yeah. right? And, and so what what she talks about is how you know Bruce Lee goes forward with his chain punches as mm -hmm. he normally would and Wong Jack Man basically ran and we know this from Bruce Lee's private letters when no one's looking yeah. that Bruce called Wong Jack Man the runner wow, so yeah. I think what happened was is you know Bruce goes in there aggressively and Wong Jack Man basically runs and turns because he is not used to it was really way above fighting. his head yeah it was way above his way head way above his head so I think what happens is go Richard Torres talked about it cuz he's talked to people who yeah. were there that he, Richard Torres even like can tell you the layout of the Oakland School. Yeah, I know right? how so they ran around. He's, he's yeah. a much better guy to ask these questions. Yeah, about. and that basically, you know, Wong Jack Man tripped while Bruce Lee is chasing him. Chain punching the back of yeah, his head. I heard. Back of his yeah. head, and then Bruce kind of tripped over him and yeah. landed. And yeah. so, so you can imagine, this is not the battle of the end of Fist of Fury of Bruce Lee versus, uh, you know, um, Bob Baker or something yeah. like that, where it's just cool da, 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 kind of thing. This is like, this is like, dude, get back here, you sob. Yeah. Where are you going? And like running around and like, you know you can imagine almost like a Jackie yeah. Chan movie throwing a yeah. bookcase in the way like it's a farce yeah. so you know he falls and Bruce gets on top of him and it's not like it's this clean martial arts match it's yeah. just like basically Wong Jack Man is the guy who's running away and then eventually falls and Bruce is like there was nothing it, to it said it and yeah. another reason why I tend to believe the Lee uh, uh, Linda Lee's account is because Linda Lee was there mm-hmm and she even mentioned what Bruce Lee said to Wong Jack Man in, in Cantonese. In Cantonese, right. So how would she just like randomly know that know unless that. she would have to go ask someone later, how do you say this so I can make this up? Like, right. because it was lay folk, and folk, uh, do you give up or yeah. not? Yeah. And she said with a that fist raised and said, said folk and folk said to him. And in Chinese said, means, yeah. do you and give up? For me, that's, there's and no controversy. He said because yes. Even the guy on Wong Jack Man's and side that was the end. Won. Yeah. And now, the controversy is just because there's a counter narrative counter narrative doesn't mean it's true like oh everyone thinks bruce lee died because egg would jesus let me tell you man it was really ninjas that's a counter narrative yeah but and we heard that one before <laughs> the, 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 but because as you well know as 10 other conspiracy yeah, theories yeah my, my, you know my, my cousin uh, my, my cousin rock in the bronx yeah, he knows he, how bruce knows lee died how. all right that's and funny. it's not what you guys think all right yeah, it's funny yeah. counter narratives are not are, shouldn't be given so much 
uh, press just because yeah. they, you know they need to be uh, evidence based. Well, thank you for your uh, your opinion and thoughts on that. And mm -hmm. and, and I recap. also could totally be wrong. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Lee could have totally got annihilated by Wong Jack Man and knocked out, and somehow there's a conspiracy yeah. to hide that. Well, um, you know, yeah, probably not. But I'm just saying, like you know, and, and then you know that that. Uh, that fight, they say, was a pivotal point in his thinking, right? Because I think it took, they, from those who were there saying it took more than three minutes, and to Bruce, that was way too long, right? right, right. And that was also part of his evolution and discovery of, hey, I have to do more than just, win. and plus he was winded, right? And at that yeah. point, that's when he started getting into training sure. and sure. working on his conditioning and incorporated running and right. weight training, and he started adding so much more elements Absolutely. to his uh, evolution of his art, Absolutely. right? To form what he actually formed later on, which is JKD. So, right. uh, well, yeah, that's a pivotal. Uh, a point in his in his, uh, in his whole thinking. Absolutely. Uh, so then, uh, uh, another question from from me because I get this a lot all the time, and you probably heard it also. Is uh, you know, what's your response to those who say Bruce Lee was not a real fighter, and that he only was an actor who knew martial arts and was able to show mm. it off well on screen? Mm. Well, I, my, I uh, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> the, the thing, literally, who cares? All right. <laughs> Bruce Lee's been dead for 50 years and you're still talking about it. I know. Right? Meanwhile, your trolling comment, no one's going to be talking about you in 50 years, all right? After you die, all right? So the thing is that everyone, you know, you, you have a finite num amount of time on this earth. For some people, like Bruce Lee, it's even way less, yeah. all right? Average person who lives to be 76 years old, that's 4,000 weeks. Yeah. Think about it. I know. Yeah, 4,000 weeks on this earth, all Left. right? And you know, like all together, all together, right, that's right, seventy six years, born, right? right? So that means that for most of us, we were already a bit into those four thousand weeks, right? So you you have a limited amount of time. You you have to to find the best way to to manage this very difficult world. For some people, they manage to put a stamp on culture, pop culture, martial arts, whatever. Yep. For most people, yes. we never get a chance to have such an impact, right? But there's this pervasive thing of people, especially people who do mediocre work or no work, yeah, to try to crap on somebody who did something. Yeah. All right. So, oh yeah, Bruce Lee. Maybe he's famous. He did all those movies. Yeah, but he's not a real fighter. I don't know how good he'd be if he was in MMA or whatever. L one, literally, who cares? Exactly. Because Fifty you years can ago. say all that stuff, and he'll still be Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. and you're just the dude trolling in the comments. Yeah. Right. And meanwhile, the fact that you go to a jiu-jitsu school twice a week doesn't mean you would win in MMA either, all right? Exactly. So uh, I think that there's this kind of pervasive thing about Bruce Lee not being a fighter that comes mostly from do-nothing people. Yeah. And so um, you can have an opinion as to whether he would do well in MMA. I mean, Bruce was not trained. The, the thing is, no one from that time period who was a great fighter would do well in MMA right now exactly. because of the evolution of mm -hmm. MMA. To the same degree, if you took <clears throat> Helio Gracie at the peak of his prowess, maybe when he was in his 30s, yeah. all right, and you put him against Gordon Ryan, who's the top jiu-jitsu champion right now, Gordon Ryan would strangle the living crap out of Helio Gracie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But without Helio Gracie, there would be no Gordon Ryan. Yeah. So we could talk about, yeah, well, Helio Gracie wouldn't last in MMA nowadays, wouldn't last in sport jiu-jitsu. And your point? Exactly. Right? Because without him, you wouldn't even be doing the thing you're doing, right? Most of the things that Bruce Lee did, cross-training, he was the first one to use those kind of like focus mitts and full oh, yeah. padded sparring or whatever. Stuff that people take for granted now. Yeah. He wasn't just an actor. His students were actually sparring and putting on equipment and learning boxing. He was watching boxing tapes. He was Back in the day stuff. when none of that was going on. None he of those, started all yeah, that. Yeah, the point karate guys. Yeah. And then there he is like, you know, looking at grappling stuff and all these kind of things. And it's like, um, you have to look at people for their time period mm -hmm. okay because uh if you took the best shaolin fighter yeah from 400 because so these people have this idea that you know everything that legacy in the past everything was so much better than now we're trying to restore the great past and the past was never great all right if you could take the best shaolin fighter whatever that means if that's even real from yeah. 400 years ago 500 years ago in his weight class and put him in UFC right now, he'd get demolished in a minute. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay? Yep. And, yep. Um, but without those people in the past, you wouldn't have these steps that built to where we are now. Yep. We are all sitting or standing on the shoulders of everyone who came in front of us. Mm -hmm. So this idea that you're going to look at people two, three generations back and go, yeah, well, now that I know everything about that person because I've read their books and I've seen everything about them, yeah, I don't really think that they're that great. 
it's like, do you realize what you're saying? <laughs> All right. You are sitting on the shoulders of people who came before you. Uh, people need to kind of calm down with that stuff. Now, I get some of that stuff is a reaction to there is a segment of Bruce Lee fandom that are so over the top that they think that he is like the god of everything yeah. and uh, I'm that's the other yeah. yeah. and the weird thing is the first person who would tell you that Bruce Lee was no god of fighting was Bruce Lee mm -hmm. he's like when you read his notes he's extremely self-aware of his limitations mm -hmm. it's just the misguided fans like the kind of comments I get on my drug letters video oh like, yeah like, I've read them death threats I read right? them okay um, because you cannot assail this god and, and, and I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan and I think the way to honor Bruce How do you Lee, know the letters are real? How exactly. do you know it's a signature? Yeah, exactly. Somebody printed those up and yeah. they're, they're Quint fake. Quentin Tarantino did it to get back at Shannon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sister. I heard them all. Yeah, that is funny. Yeah. But then, then you get the others like, uh, you know, the pro karate uh, champs at the time, like Joe Lewis, who mm -hmm. said, you know, Bruce was the best he's ever seen. He had the power of a heavyweight and his right. punches and his kicks. And right. then, yeah. After he trained with the Little Dragon, Joe went on to win an unheard of 11 consecutive grand championships. For a guy who only weighed 138 pounds, and he weighed less than that when he passed away, he hit extremely hard. He could hit as hard as a heavyweight. He had real fast uh, twitch muscle fibers, something he's born with. He trained hard. He worked on a lot of his stabilizers and muscles. And then you have Jim Kelly, right, who was also a karate champion at that time, saying, you hear interviews with him, and he's saying he was the greatest yeah. of all time from right. that time period, right. and greatest fighter of all time that he's ever seen or witnessed. Right. Yeah. In my opinion, the greatest martial artist that's ever lived, yeah. uh, Bruce Lee. I'll talk to you about that later. Probably, probably have questions for me on that. But in my opinion, I'll tell you right now, uh, I've, been, I've fought the best. I trained with the best. I, kn I know great mar I know great martial artists, and there's, there's never been anybody, in my opinion, like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was unbelievable, mm -hmm. absolutely unbelievable, guys. But I know people he sparred with. I never mention their names either. But Bruce Lee was untouchable. Yeah, you know he he was uh, the speed, the timing, the technique. Right. And, and you get others that were there with him right. and Bob Wall who says great things about Bruce Lee who's taken all those punches and kicks from him in the films and right. to make the fights as realistic yeah. as possible yeah. who would say nothing but raving about his fighting ability yeah. and even Chuck Norris as hard as it is for him to say that right. Bruce Lee was really that great right. even he at times yeah, will say has to admit it. Yeah, yeah. That, that he was really but, good but Charles I think what you're not realizing is that Knuckle Sticks 69 on YouTube said Bruce Lee's not a fighter <laughs> exactly and that should be enough that should be enough us. Knuckle Sticks yeah, yeah. alright we'll move on to the next question that's says it all right there. <laughs> so th this this is kind of a fun question, and uh, you know I, I know you've done a couple of episodes uh, on the uh, the YouTube channel. I don't even know if the name is Beardy or Birdie, but uh, mm -hmm. I used to watch a couple of his uh, videos. Sorry the, to hear that. Yeah, I am too now. In the early days, before they got so far fetched, and and then as I watched them, I, I realized that a lot of the information was false. It was inaccurate. It yeah. was kind of just bullshit, and right. I, I I couldn't even watch anymore. I haven't yeah. watched his channel in years now because it got so over the top and so bullshit oriented that I can't even listen to the guy anymore. And right. I know you did a couple of funny episodes yeah. on exposing him. Yeah. Uh, did you kind of ever meet him or what, what, what did you come to terms with no. after doing some of those episodes on this guy? I mean, is, so uh, contrary to popular belief, because uh, some people think that I spend an inordinate amount of time watching martial arts on YouTube, yeah. I, I really don't. Yeah. If you were to go into my YouTube app right now, you know, the algorithm feeds whatever you're looking at, yeah. um, you would see that it's it's like Marvel stuff and it's um, fitness stuff yeah, yeah, and yes. Krishna Murthy. Sounds like me. And Krishna Murthy. That's yeah. pretty much all that shows up on my feed. But there's there's some knuckleheads out there that think like I watch their channels and yeah. I copy their talking points, even though their channels are nothing at all like mine. Um, and I never watch any of the beardy stuff because it would show up occasionally. Like if I was doing some Bruce Lee research, I would see it a few years ago and I could just tell from the title I was like mm, something just seems off yeah him and that Bruce Lee real fight channel are both kind of sketchy yeah kind of sketchy yeah, right? to me too both of them and but, they, I, you, you're right putting them in the same category because yeah, yeah but but I think what those creators realized is that um, 
one, if you have any dissension of people kind of criticizing what you're saying, but you can just block them in the comments. Yeah. So what you do is you end up siloing a bunch of people who just think that what you are putting out there is true. It's really weird how popular Ber uh, Beardy is. He Well, he goes by Beardy, but he says Birdie. Yeah. He has a funny accent, right? <laughs> so I like to call him Birdie. Birdie. Um, and he also pretends his name is uh, uh, some Bernard McAllister, and yeah. he's a MMA foot. He's and fake. you can't find anything no, on the no, guy. No, I did Nothing. I went through share dog, I went through everything. There's, there's no MMA fighter named Bernard McAllister that is yeah. an IFC champion or there's something. There's not one photo of him that you could even pull no, up on the no. guy. Nothing. And, and also, there's that one video where he said he trained like Bruce Lee for a year. Yeah. And then he shows his body, but With, it's without the head. Exactly. And he showed two separate photos, which were very obviously two different people. Yeah. What Beardy and his uh, misguided fans don't understand is you can do a reverse Google image search. You can put in an image in Google and it'll scan. And then we saw that those were two different Images. fitness trainers. Oh my God. Right? Two completely and different trainers. And he was claiming it was his body after he's body, trained right? like Bruce for a year, yes, right? Yes, yes. And then, but if you were to put put that in the comments with a link, he would just, you know, banish, banish you. So, you. But what I'm surprised is that there's so many people out there who like Bruce Lee, but not enough to know anything about him. And then, yeah. like, you know, like he said that photo with uh, Dan Inosanto was some grandmaster or whatever. And then recently, he I think he posted the Ted Thomas interview. And then he says stuff like, he is the one who discovered it. And I think I did an episode on the Ted Thomas interview like last year, one, yeah. right? Yeah, wow. So oh, that was a great episode. But I, I listened to that one. Yeah, yeah so you it, really it, broke it, it down. It's, it's really strange that like his people are just these kind of like lap dogs, yeah. and he doesn't show himself. He has a fake name, and I think what happens is, uh, and we kind of see it in um, in different mediums. We see it in entertainment. We see it in politics. That sometimes if you just it doesn't matter if it's true. If you just keep saying it loudly, there's an audience for it. And yeah. then what you do is you just have to keep outdoing yourself. So he basically just makes stuff up because he has zero consequences. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, he, he pretends that he's the first one to show footage that, that's been on the internet for years. And people, his lapdogs are like, ugh. And occasionally I'll get a comment from a beardy guy on one of my beardy videos, like, attacking me. And I'm like, dude, you can literally Google this, you know? You you don't have to listen to me. Yeah. You want to attack me as the messenger, why don't you Google what he said and you will find it out? Yeah. And it's so weird because they're on this Venn diagram of people who believe him, know what Bruce Lee, uh, know who Bruce Lee is, but refuse to do any Bruce Lee research. And when you have these three circles overlapping, you have a Beardy fan. Yeah. All right? Uh, yeah, so this book here, isn't, it's not rare by any stretch of the imagination, it was written by, uh, it's actually a collection of interviews by Chaplin Chang, uh, who knew Bruce Lee and worked on some of the films, and so it's in Chinese, but the uh, photos are in English, as <laughs> I always like to say. Uh, so they have like interviews with Lo Wei, with uh, Robert Chan, who was a childhood yeah, friend of Bruce yeah. Lee, he was also in uh, Way of the Dragon. Um, I believe there's even an interview with Betty Ting Pei. Oh, wow. Uh, Stephen Tong, who is the boy in Enter the Dragon, the kick me, finger pointing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're they interview him when, in when here. When did that come out? It came out a few years ago, but I believe that a lot of the interviews are actually even from, some of them are newer and some of yeah. them are from way back. Wow. So uh, it's uh, they have a Bolo in here. So people who actually knew Bruce, it's a lot of in-depth questions. So I, I, I've never seen this book before. I, I love the picture of Bruce from Return of the Dragon. Yep. And uh, I'll show close-ups of this also, uh, but that's a really interesting... And you bought this in uh, Hong Kong? I bought this in Hong Kong. Wow. Just at a normal bookstore. Yeah, yeah. wow, yeah. nice. And uh, unfortunately, Chaplin Chang just recently passed away, but uh, this book has been a great source for little Bruce Lee tidbits. That, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah. Well, what's the next one you have out there? Okay, let's see here. Um, I feel like you're like Felix the Cat with your bag of tricks there. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, actually, we'll let, save that one for last. Let's see this one. So, well, I really only have one other one. Okay, well, let's, let's see uh, the other one. Okay, so here we go. I got, recently, I got this in the mail. Uh, so this book is not available for sale yet. Okay. This is Who Wrote the Dow? Oh, I read about that book, okay. man. Everyone's waiting for it. Uh, so basically, as, as uh, s some people may or may not know, uh, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do is uh, not really an original work by yeah. Bruce Lee. Um, it was originally sold as such in 75, but yeah. that was some kind of, uh, let's say, fudging it by O'Hara Publications. Okay. Really what the Tao of Jeet Kune Do is, is a collection of Bruce Lee's notes. Yeah. Most of those notes are the ones he wrote while he was healing from his back injury. Yep. 
And it was just him grabbing books off the shelves and just kind of putting kind of pen to paper, formulating his ideas. That's what I read. The book event, when Tao Jeet Kune Do came out, it was kind of pawned off as if it was like all written by and illustrated by him, um, which is unfair to people who are like, oh, Bruce plagiarized all these different authors. No, those were his notes. Mm -hmm. He never meant for those to be. He was researching. It was it different... after he yeah. died, perhaps because Linda Lee had sold her her portion of Concord Productions back to Raymond Chow, mm -hmm. so she basically lost all the rights to the films. She had suddenly had nothing to monetize, I and heard. Now Bruce Lee is now this big thing. So they decided to kind of put the notes together and put it out there as a book. Um, and then later they had to kind of actually start to put what where some of the sources are. Well. Dr. James Bishop, who's like a Bruce Lee fan and Bruce Lee expert. Yeah, he wrote a number of books. Uh, I'll include of Bruce some of Lee books, uh, those, yeah. his books in the links below if you guys want to see the books that James Bishop wrote. He wrote quite a few on Bruce Lee. I didn't I didn't actually know anything about James Bishop, but he contacted me recently. Oh, wow. Because he wants to talk about his book, and maybe we're going to have him on the podcast very shortly. Nice. And then he said, let me send you an advanced copy so you can take a look at it. So this book so, is not available yet. This so is an advanced I, I'm copy. I'm going to take this then and just add it to my collection now. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Does it look good? This is the one time wow. I have something you don't have. Yes, <laughs> I'm waiting for this, man. I'm waiting for it. I can't wait to read that. Yeah, so... Um, so what's the premise behind it in, 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 so in a nutshell? What, what, what are you trying to what, do with what, this what, versus... What? Let me see the towel over there also that you have. So this see, is this the is, original one, right? This is yeah, it's not quite the original one. It's, it's an, an early one. An earlier one, yeah, because yeah, so many... Is mine. Prints came out on this. Every I mean, every Bruce Lee and Jeet Kundo fan has a dog-eared version of this book, yes, and this is mine. I can see right? it. You have, you have notes everywhere. I have notes in there, yeah. So I, I've been I've been a f I'm, I'm a nerd. All right, yeah. this, is, this is my thing. Right? I, I did that to mine too when I yeah. was studying, and I didn't use the original one I bought in '73, which is the first printing, uh -huh. and now they're like up to like the fiftieth printing exactly. of this book, and so, they have expanded. Yeah, it and, and stuff. those are the ones I wrote all over. But this is uh, so this is the Tao, yes, right, and then that's a companion, I guess, to this. So it's actually the source book. Okay. So what I so he sent it to me. I was like, okay. I'm, every time a new book on Bruce Lee comes out, I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Sure, I'll take a look at it. Um, but it's like, what new? Is, what, what is there new under the sun about Bruce yeah. Lee? Yeah. Uh, no. If you're a Bruce Lee and or Jeet Kune Do fan, practitioner, instructor, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to say that I very you have to get this book. Absolutely. You have to get this yeah. book. Because what it is, is he went through every single, you know, because the Dao Ji Kondo is like a collection of these little mm -hmm. passages, mm -hmm. right, that Bruce Lee wrote yeah. from notes from other books. Sometimes they would be straight verbatim, yep. and other times he might swap out fencing for Jeet Kune Do. Right. So he's kind of like trying to make this stuff his own. And what uh, Dr. James Bishop did is he went through every single passage wow. and found the original source Based on, you know, we, we see a lot of photos of Bruce Lee's library, yeah. so he knew what books he was looking at, and then he, he went and did the extra research for the ones he couldn't find, and found to 85% where every single passage of Dao of Jeet Kune Do came from, what books they came from, oh. and everything. And he we, sources that in this book. Yes. Page by page. So that's what made, when I, when I, I started tearing through it, and I'm like, oh... When you are on page 34 of this source book, mm -hmm. it matches with page 34, 34 of Dao Jeet Kune Do. Wow. So you can literally put them side by side. You see the passage on top. Then you see the, because he'll put the original quote. So you can see what the original quote was, how Bruce Lee may have changed it, and what book it came from. Oh, wow. It's for interesting. The entire thing. And he did it for about 85% of everything in there, which means Amazing. that potentially 15% of Dao Jeet Kune Do. Stay tuned for part three as we conclude our discussion with Sifu Alex Richter, a.k.a. the Kung Fu Genius, explaining the new book, Who Wrote the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, and sharing more of his Bruce Lee collectibles with us. Coming soon.